Good morning, everybody. We're back live here from the birdhouse and we are finishing up the month of June. It's June 28th. We are rolling into July and there are lots of baby birds out there. So we'll give you an update on some of those and some of the other birds that are people are seeing here and hearing. As always, we love to know what kind of things you are seeing. You can give us your sightings in the comments or just say hello. And if you have any questions, absolutely, you can put those in there as well. Um, but let's get started. First of all, I woke up this morning to a very loud uh, Carolina wren singing and singing and singing. Um, so there's lots of uh, birds that will sing all summer long. So usually we're hearing birds sing uh, a lot during breeding season and during, uh, you know, around May and in April. Um, but there's some that'll sing all summer long and the Carolina run is definitely one of them. And boy, was this little guy loud this morning. So definitely Carolina runs are still out there singing. Another bird you might hear a lot are um, robins right now. They're still singing a lot. And um, those, that red-eyed vireo. So if you're out in the woods, you might hear um, something that sounds kind of like a robin, but less, uh, less of a song. Um, and less of a tune to it, that could be a red-eyed vireo. So they will sing all summer long as well. There's still people getting Orioles at their feeders. So um, this is a photo here of an Oriole sent in um, by Mark. Um, but I thought I would take this opportunity here to show you guys that um, Orioles are definitely still coming to feeders. Usually there's a pretty big drop off of activity at jelly feeders. And we haven't seen a lot of that drop off, which has been interesting this year, but they're definitely coming to mealworms. So if you're looking to give them a little bit of something extra, you can absolutely give them the live or freeze dried mealworms. They do like that. But a lot of people are still getting them coming to their jelly feeder. So one thing you can do to provide both is if you have two Oriole feeders with little cups in them, you can do one with jelly, one with mealworms, or some people have a feeder that has two cups in it, which is perfect. You can put jelly in one and mealworms in the other. So you're still providing them with um, all that food. So people are still seeing Orioles in their backyards. I haven't heard of any reports yet of babies coming to backyards, but it's only a matter of time. It's any moment now that they'll start bringing those young to the feeders. Well, so that's a really exciting time of the year. So um, if you took your Oriole feeder down for a little bit because you weren't seeing that much activity, you might think about putting it back up now and putting some jelly in there because they will start having, um, their, their babies will start leaving the nest and they'll start coming to feeder soon. So um, here's a photo sent in by Bob. He said some recent photos. Um, an Oriole female with a hidden fledgling below here, below her. So still some, uh, some more Oriole activity. Here's the female and there's a little fledgling hidden in the tree below. So people are still seeing Orioles out there and we'll, we'll get them through the summer. Usually the end of August, they really drop off and they start heading back down south, but we still have some more time uh, for Orioles to be in backyards. Um, this was sent in by Stephanie who says, Oriole feeders, they're not just for Orioles. So uh, Stephanie's been getting a great catbird still coming to her jelly feeder. So you never know what you might get um, coming to the jelly feeder. We've had reports of cardinals eating it, um, the house finches eating it, um, you might get a house sparrow every once in a while eating it. So you never know what might come to your jelly feeder. And here's another photo of that cat bird there eating the jelly. And here is a squirrel. <laughs> so every once in a while, um, we tend not to get a lot of reports of squirrels going after um, Oriole feeders, but here is the photographic evidence. It looks like the squirrel here really likes that orange. So uh, you never know what you might get coming to your Oriole feeder. Um, just like I mentioned, the Carolina wren has been singing and nesting. Um, lots of people are still getting house wrens coming and going from houses. So they, um, they are still showing some of that nesting activity. Haven't heard of any reports of the young leaving yet, but that should be only a matter of time. So if you have a little brown bird that's coming and going from your birdhouse, it could very well be one of these house wrens. So they're definitely nesting. And baby birds are starting to leave the nest. So we've gotten some photos sent in of some different baby birds. If you're lucky enough to have any kind of habitat that has wide open areas and you've got some birdhouses out there, you might 
be able to attract these tree swallows. And tree swallows are a really bright, bright, vivid blue, and then they have a white breast, and they'll fly through the fields and pick off insects in the air. They're really fun to watch. Um, and they're cavity nesters, so they do nest in birdhouses. If you've got lots of trees around, you're probably not going to get them, even though they are called tree swallows. Um, that's probably because they do nest in hollow trees. Um, but they really do like wide open fields. And here's some photos that Mark sent in and juvenile tree swallows getting fed. So here's some juveniles that have left the nest. And this is a really cool photo here showing the adult feeding the nestlings. And this is pretty common that once the young have left the nest, the adults will still come to the nestling and feed them. So if you see a young bird on the ground, um, as long as it doesn't look injured, it, it might be flapping its wings around quite a bit. That's that's really common. That's what they do to get the attention from the parents and the parents will feed them on the ground for a few days before they kind of go out and venture on their own. Some more uh, cavity nesting birds that are starting to leave their nest boxes are bluebirds. So this is, uh, th these are some photos here sent in by Bob, who says some of the young birds in the neighborhood. So here's the male, you can see the male bluebird down here on the bottom. And then the younger bluebirds, they don't have that blue, that bright blue color on them yet. Sometimes they'll have a little bit of blue, uh, but the, there's two nestlings. There's one here on the left, and then there's one kind of on the right hand side here. So. Here is a nestling as well. So you can see it's it's a pretty brown bird, um, but it does have some blue on its wings. So they do have some blue on them right there. Uh, but the bluebirds are starting to leave their nests and the young will usually stick around those nesting cavities and they will help raise the broods that the um, that the parents might have coming up in the season. So you might see these young ones stick around their parents all summer long, and you might see them start to bring insects into the house and that kind of thing, um, because they do help raise uh, other broods, which is really fun. So here's another juvenile bluebird there. If you're out birding and uh, you're out in those wide open areas where you might see the tree swallows or the bluebirds, look on the power lines because you might just see an American kestrel. A lot of the times you'll find um, the morning doves will sit on the power lines, but you might just get yourself a kestrel as well. So kestrels are about the same size as the morning dove, but they're going to have a larger head. So if you think of the kind of the profile of the morning dove, how they're fairly large bird, but they've got a really little head. Um, the kestrel is about the same size body wise, but they're going to have a much stockier head. So keep your eyes out for them because they'll be here all summer. They will hunt very small mammals and large insects that are in these wide open fields. So keep your eye out for American kestrel, a really cool photo here showing that behavior. Um, sent in by Mark where they're sitting on that power line. If you go by the water, you might see the baby ducks. So here's some baby uh, mallards. This was sent in again by Mark. It says ducklings following the leader. This is at the Erie Canal. And um, this is over at Montezuma. So earlier in the season, Mark had sent over some photos of sandhill cranes. And then he sent in some of them with their young. And here's another photo here um, of those young that are growing up. So over at Montezuma there, the young sandhill cranes are out and about. So really cool photos there of the sandhill cranes. So really neat. And then here's an American coot. So this is another common bird you might find, especially if you go to Montezuma. Um, this is another waterfowl species. They're all black. They've got a white bill and their young are out and about here too. And here's um, the, the young. They're begging for some food and getting some food from its parent there. So some really neat water birds. And then he also sent in this Photo. It says, fun capture of the heron rookery at Montezuma. Wanted to share. This is really neat. So look at all these nests. These are all heron nests here up in these trees. So this is the heron rookery out at Montezuma. Really cool photo there showing all those different nests. So really, really cool photo there. That's something to see. Um, this by Lynn, who said, my daughter snapped this in Henrietta today. First time seeing a fledgling gull. So uh, there's all kinds of different young out there right now. Lots of different young leaving their nests and going out into the world. Gulls um, can be quite difficult to identify the, the young um, 
the plumages of the the young seagulls can look uh, can look a lot like one another, and especially as they grow older, um, each year they can look a little bit different too. So that can be um, quite an identification challenge if you're looking into learning more about birds. Um, gall identification can be quite challenging and quite fun. Um, here's an here's another photo of a bird that sometimes you can find in your backyard coming to the feeders, the indigo bunting. Um, so this was a, at Birdsong Trail in Mendham Ponds Park. Um, a really beautiful bird here. They'll come to um, millet feeders. They, they'll eat the Niger seed. So they do tend to like those smaller seeds. Sunflower hearts are another one that they'll go for. So you never know, you might just get a glimpse of a beautiful indigo bunting. And um, here is a purple martin. So uh, we were talking about tree swallows before and how they will fly around in the air and grab insects right out of the air. Well, so are, will purple martins. And purple martins are the birds that they congregate all together in those large purple martin houses with, that have multiple chambers in them. They usually have anywhere from eight to 24 chambers, if not more. And then sometimes if you get a nice big colony, like this is my guess would be this is probably from um, Montezuma as well. Um, they have a whole bunch of houses together and those purple martins will all congregate and nest there. And this is a neat photo showing that purple martin with a big dragonfly in its mouth. And um, he says, purple martin brought back a dragonfly to the purple martin houses. So there must be some young in there that this uh, Martin is feeding. So really, really neat. Montezuma is definitely one of the best places locally to see purple martins. They're right there. Um, when you go to the nature center at Montezuma, they have all kinds of houses out there. So they'll nest in not only the houses, but they'll also nest in gourds as well. So there are also fly catchers out and about. Here's a photo of an Eastern Kingbird sent in by Mark. And the Kingbird is a type of fly catcher. It's a pretty large fly catcher and it has a white tip on its tail. So that's one way you can identify them. Um, here is an Eastern Wood Peewee, another type of fly catcher. And speaking of birds that will call throughout the summer. The peewee is one of them. And as far as the peewee goes, their call sounds almost like they're saying peewee. And I'll play their call here because if you go out and spend any time outside or in the woods, you'll probably hear a peewee making its sound. So it almost sounds like it's saying peewee. And they are out all, all uh, summer. You can hear them. Uh, you can hear them and, and see them. So that is the peewee, so another type of flycatcher. Now, in th at this time of the year, a lot of birds will switch to eating a diet of insects. So if you've been putting out mealworms, um, you'll probably be surprised by how much you can go through because they do eat so many insects. Um, but there are some birds that are still eating berries. Usually the birds will switch back to a diet of more seeds and berries as we get into the cooler months and the insect activity has died down. Um, but here are some photos sent in by Bob that says some of the young birds in the neighborhood. And here's the cardinals going after some berries here. And it's those berries that give them that bright red color. And this looks like a juvenile here that's got a little berry in its mouth. So that's really cool behavior there. The young, uh, the young cardinals, the juveniles can a lot of the times look like the females, so it can sometimes be hard to tell the difference, but you can tell it's a juvenile because they won't have that bright orange bill yet. So if you think of your adult female cardinal, they're brown, but they also have that bright orange bill. The juveniles won't have that yet. And usually their feathers look a little shorter. Their crest might not be all, um, all filled in yet. So they can look quite a bit different, um, but here they are eating their berries. Another berry eater here is a robin. That's a great photo there of the robin with a big old berry in its mouth. I'm wondering if, if, um, what kind of berry bush that might be if uh, Bob happens to be on. What kind of berries are you putting out there that the birds like? And uh, here's a juvenile robin. So um, the, the juveniles will be quite speckled. So uh, they're not too dissimilar looking from some of those other thrush species that have a lot of speckles on their belly right now. Um, but pretty common bird you might 
around um, your, in your yard right now are going to be the juvenile robins. And this is another one you might see kind of perched on a little shrub or perched on a tree. And um, it almost looks like they don't know what they're doing or they might, you know, be kind of hunkered down and look quite small. Um, that's going to be, again, really common. Once they leave the nest, they kind of stick around by it. And then the, the, the adults will come and still feed them food for a little bit before they are out and they fledge. So this is one that looks like it's been out in the world for a little bit. It looks quite a bit larger, um, but this is a fledgling robin, so a young robin there. And then another berry eater is going to be the cedar waxwing, and they definitely devour berries and love coming to berry bushes. You can see in this photo too how they, they get their name. Their feathers actually do have um, some waxy substance on them. So they've got these little waxy feathers um, down here in their tails. They also have some red waxy substances on their wings as well. So this is a cedar waxwing, one of the other species of birds we have here that has a crest on it. And usually you'll see them in a group. So it's rare to see just one. Usually they will flock together and they will make quick work of any kind of berry bushes. And hummingbirds are still around. Uh, people are reporting them coming to uh, feeders. And also now that some more plants are in bloom, they're, they're coming to um, some different flowering plants. So that is another great way to attract them, not only with your feeder, but put out some kind of a plant as well. They like long tubular plants. Next week, we'll be talking about butterfly and hummingbird gardening. So we'll give you some tips on some different plants you can put out um, that they really like as well. And then woodpeckers are another type of cavity nester. And we've been showing you photos of some of their nests. Here's a, a flicker nest here with its young sticking their their head out and there's the adult feeding them so here's your northern flicker really really neat bird you can catch that glimpse of yellow underneath their feathers when they're in flight and uh, i love this photo that uh, mark had sent in uh, because this is a flicker removing some waste from the nesting cavity so um this is what's called a fecal sac uh, but the flickers will and, and other birds as well will remove these from their nests a lot of the time to keep that nest cavity clean so this is neat to see this kind of behavior. So a really cool photo there. Pileated woodpeckers were hearing reports of the young starting to come to feeders. So you might see some of these little pileated woodpeckers um, popping by to have some kind of a suet, uh, a suet meal here. And here's a young, looks like a downy woodpecker um, that is with its parent here that Bob sent the photo of in as well. So young woodpeckers are out and then you, sh you shouldn't be surprised if you start to see some at your feeders. And here's a red-bellied woodpecker, which also looks like it could be a juvenile there. Butterflies are starting to be seen more and more. Um, we've gotten a couple reports of monarch butterflies starting to filter in. This photo was sent in by Karen. It says, saw my first viceroy of the summer in Canandaigua. Yes, this is definitely a viceroy butterfly. And you might say, well, that looks like a monarch butterfly to me. They are actually a mimic of the monarch butterfly, which is really cool. Um, so they're going to be smaller than your monarch butterfly. So monarch but butterflies are quite large. These viceroy butterflies are just a little bit bigger than, say, your, um, your, your cabbage white butterfly, those little white butterflies you probably see in your yard. Um, so they're, so they're going to be a little bit larger than that, but smaller than a monarch butterfly. But the, ma the main difference is going to be there's this little line that goes through their hind wings. So you can probably just make that out here on this photo, that it does have this line that goes through its hind wing. And the monarch butterflies don't have that. So that's how you can identify one from another. So next Tuesday, we're going to be talking more about butterflies and their host plants and their nectar plants and how you can better attract them to your yard. But there's definitely more and more butterfly activity happening. Um, here's another photo of some butterflies sent in um, by Bob. And I believe that's a, um, oh, what is it? Is that a pearly eye, northern pearly eye butterfly? Um, here is a tiger swallowtail. You can see it right popped in there before, uh, right in front of the, the, the stop sign. And um, they are definitely around. You might see them flying high in the treetops because they their host plant where they'll lay their eggs um, and, and those eggs will hatch and their caterpillars will eat uh, the, the leaves of usually larger trees. So that's what's called a host plant is where these butterflies will lay their eggs. And it's on those plants that the, uh, the caterpillars will 
eat. So that is the tiger swallowtail, and you can usually see them around maple trees and oak trees and all that kind of stuff. Black swallowtails are definitely out. I saw, I've seen a few of those. You might get those in your garden um, as well, drinking nectar from some of your nectar producing plants, like the milkweed that's starting to bloom. Um, and they'll lay their eggs on things like parsley and rue and Queen Anne's lace. So if you have any of those in your garden, um, in the next few weeks, you might wanna start looking to see if there's any kind of caterpillars. Um, there's also a spice bush swallowtail we have around here. They'll lay their eggs on sassafras trees and spice bush. So lots of different activity out there. And then here's the giant swallowtail. If you happen to grow hops, they'll lay their eggs on hops. So um, you might start to see some more swallowtail activity, but this is probably the most common butterfly you'll see. And that is the cabbage white butterfly. Um, the pearl crescents, there's been some reports of these little orange butterflies called the pearl crescents. They'll be out and about. They'll lay their eggs on plantain and that kind of thing. So some of these the grasses and things that can be considered weeds in your yard are actually host plants for some of these butterflies. My favorite, the Baltimore checker spot should be seen soon. Um, really beautiful crazily patterned uh, butterfly here and it has bright orange antenna. Really, really cool looking insect. So um, th it, that is what I have prepared for you guys. If you have any questions, you can absolutely put those in the comments. Um, like I said, next week we'll be talking about butterfly and hummingbird gardening. So that's always a fun topic if you're interested in, in that. Um, Randy says, good morning, Liz and everybody. Um, good morning, Randy. He says, a few days ago, a hummingbird visited. All right. So Randy is seeing some hummingbird activity. Um, the hummingbird activity in general seems kind of sparse again this year. It's been kind of sparse the last few years. So if you're not having very good luck, you're not alone. Um, probably the best thing to do at this point is just to make sure your feeders are clean, that nectar is fresh. You want to clean it out every few days unless you use something like that feeder fresh nectar defender. And then, of course, plants, plants that the hummingbirds love. Um, Ed says, we have a Carolina wren like yours that likes to announce quite loudly the arrival of dawn on a regular basis recently, which is a bit early for me. Also, the lightning bugs are back in force, hundreds of them in the field north of us. It looks like a fairy tale movie. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I've seen a couple, um, a couple lightning bugs uh, recently, but I haven't seen a whole bunch yet in my, my neighborhood. I'll have to go out um, into a field at night and see the real show. And yeah, that Carolina run started very early this morning. It was at, at, at least five o'clock, if not earlier, that it really started singing. So they are an early bird. Um, and Patricia says she's got a downy woodpecker eating grape jelly. So we were talking about some of the other birds that will eat the grape jelly. Stephanie had photos of the catbird eating the grape jelly and Patricia has a downy woodpecker eating it. So you never know what, what birds might have um, a sweet tooth, if you will, even though they don't have teeth. Um, so looks like that's everybody's comments and questions for today. We'll be back next week with another broadcast. And until then, have a great week and we'll talk to you soon.